Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Blue Black Ninjas featuring Ingenious Infiltrator, the main reason to play the deck as a very powerful ninjutsu creature. So the way the ninjutsu mechanic works is if we have an attacking creature that goes unblocked, we can return that creature to our hand and then put the ninjutsu creature onto the battlefield tapped and attacking by paying the ninjutsu cost. In the case of Ingenious Infiltrator, just single blue, single black. So very cheap to put this into play. And then Ingenious Infiltrator also says whenever a ninja we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. So the Infiltrator itself is also a ninja, so draws a card when it deals damage to the opponent. And if we ninjutsu it into play, it's going to be unblocked, which means that it connects right away and we get to get ahead on cards. And of course, the more ninjas we have in play, the more powerful the Infiltrator will become. So the goal of the deck is to play a whole bunch of cheap evasive creatures to enable ninjutsu and then follow those up with ninjutsu creatures which will have a nice beneficial effect when they manage to deal damage to the opponent. So taking a look at the deck, we've got 12 cheap evasive creatures to enable ninjutsu, 4 copies of Ornithopter, can't get cheaper than that as an O2 flyer for 0 mana. We've got 4 copies of Fairy Seer, which has a nice enter the battlefield ability, letting us scry 2 when the fairy enters the battlefield, and is also a 1 mana 1-1 one, one flyer, so usually goes unblocked, and if we pick it back up with ninjutsu, we can replay it to get the scry 2 once again, which is very nice. And then four copies of Changeling Outcast as a 1-1 Changeling, so that means that it's also a ninja, which is very beneficial alongside Ingenious Infiltrator, so we get to draw additional cards with the Changeling Outcast as well. And the Outcast can block and cannot be blocked, so nice ninjutsu enabler there as well. And then taking a look at our ninjas, we've got two copies of Mistblade Shinobi, which we can ninjutsu for just a single blue. And when the Shinobi deals combat damage to an opponent, we can return target creature the opponent controls back to their hand. So nice cheap bounce spell. Otherwise it costs us three mana for a 1-1, one -one, which is not really something we want. Then at 2 mana for ninjutsu, we've got the full 4 copies of Ninja of the Deep Hours, which is pretty similar to the Ingenious Infiltrator, just a little bit worse, since it only draws cards when the ninja itself deals damage to the opponent, instead of also letting us draw extra cards when other ninjas deal damage. And then it's a 2-2, two -two, and normally we can cast it for 4 mana. And then also the full 4 copies of Ingenious Infiltrator, which is the all-star in this deck, which we can ninjutsu for just a blue and a black, and otherwise it costs us 4 mana for a 2-3. And then we also have the full playset of Mist, Syndicate Naga, another nice addition from Modern Horizons. We can Ninjutsu for 3 mana, and when the Naga deals combat damage to an opponent, we get to make a token that's a copy of Mist, Syndicate Naga, which will also have this ability. So the Naga can quickly get out of hand and make an entire army of 3-1 creatures, which can close out the game very quickly. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've got some cheap interaction, which we're used to seeing in Modern. 4 copies of Fatal Push as a nice cheap removal spell, and we've got 6 Fashlands to enable Revolt. We've got 6 discard spells, 4 copies of Inquisition of Kozilak, alongside 2 copies of Thoughtseize. Then we also have 2 copies of Smoke Shroud as an enchantment aura that gives a creature plus 1 plus 1 and flying. And when a ninja enters the battlefield under our control, we can return Smoke Shroud from the graveyard attached to that creature onto the battlefield. So even if they kill the creature with Smoke Shroud, we can still get it back and get some value. And giving a creature flying is very nice since once we get a card like Ingenious Infiltrator, Ninja or a Naga in play, the first hit is usually going to connect, since we can enable it with ninjutsu, but then afterwards the creature is sometimes just stranded on the battlefield if the opponent has some big blockers out. So then being able to give those creatures evasion with a smoke shroud means we can keep connecting and keep making tokens with a naga or drawing cards with infiltrator or ninja of the deep hours, which is quite nice. And then we also have two copies of Force of Negation as a nice counter spell that we can potentially play without paying any mana, just by exiling a blue card from our hand in the opponent's turn to counter target non-creature spell and also exiling it. So while Force of Negation has a bit of a drawback in that we can cast it during our own turn to maybe protect one of our creatures from removal spell, it still stops the opponent's game plan. And once we were going off with Ninja of the Deep Hours or Ingenious Infiltrator, we usually have a ton of cards in hand, so two for one ourselves to cast a cheap Force of Negation is usually worth it. And then our mana base, we've got four copies of Dark Side Shores, two copies of Prismatic Vista and the four Polluted Deltas, Fetch Lands, which can search up two Watery Graves, and then a lot of Basic Lands, four Islands and four Swamps, which also go nicely with the Prismatic Vista. Could potentially play another Fetch Land other than Prismatic Vista, like a Flooded Strand or a Bloodstained Mire, but sometimes our life total matters and we just want to fetch up a Basic anyway, so the Prismatic Vista can save us a little bit of life there. 
Then moving on to the sideboard, we have six graveyard hate cards with two copies of Leyline of the Void, and the full four copies of Nile Spellbomb, which is a bit more flexible than Leyline, since we don't need to have it in our opening hand, and if we draw multiples it still cantrips, so it's not too bad. And against decks that don't go all in on the graveyard and just want a little bit of graveyard hate, then uh, Nile Spellbomb is the way to go. Then we've got two copies of Ceremonious Rejection to counter target Colorless Spell, which is great against any artifact decks or Tron decks. We've got one Spell Pierce to counter target non creature spell unless the opponent pays two, so a nice cheap counter spell to maybe protect our ninjutsu synergies. Two copies of Collective Brutality, which is quite useful against some more aggressive decks like Burn, as it can take out a creature as well as gain us a bit of life and maybe take a card out of the opponent's hand. Great if we have multiple Ornithopters that we don't really need, usually only want to draw one Ornithopter, so we can discard additional Ornithopters as discard fodder to the Collective Brutality, for example and additional cards we might not need, since sometimes we're just drawing a ton of cards with the different ninja synergies, and we just want to be able to convert those cards into a collective brutality, just so we can stay alive and then uh, have enough time to close out the game. So it could even make room for the brutality in the main deck, since it's quite good in our deck, but I uh, couldn't quite fit in the brutality in the main deck. But uh, yeah, that's definitely a nice addition to have in a 75. And then we have two more copies of Force of Negation against the combo and control matchups. And finally, two copies of Plague Engineer, which is great against any tribal or token strategies out there. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. This is an easy mulligan. No enablers, no ninjutsu creatures, too many lands. And this is better. Still no enablers is the issue. Do have Inquisitions and Force of Negations as interaction, and then just takes one of our enablers to get this hand going. So I guess we'll uh, try it. And then I could bottom one of the Inquisitions, could bottom one of the Ninjutsu creatures. I guess I'll bottom the Naga here. So we keep uh, two Inquisitions as relevant early interaction in case we don't find an enabler right away. And then keep the Ninja of the Deep Hours. Alright, so up against Tron, we could have forced the Sphere, I think I would rather keep Force for one of the payoff cards. And then just Inquisition for now. And it looks like Mono Green Tron, they've got Double Tower and Mine, so they don't have Tron yet. Ancient Stirrings, they could cast next turn. So I think I'll just take the Ancient Stirrings now, and then the next Inquisition can take the Spatial Contortion to get rid of the removal spell. So we can still uh, get in with a Ninja creature at some point. But the good news is that they don't have Tron. If they play an Expedition map, I might force it, but if we don't have to, then I want to hang on to the Force for one of the payoff cards, and we also want to keep the Ninja, of course. Alright, Naga, so at least we can cast at turn 3. So yeah, let's just Inquisition the Spatial Contortion, see what else they picked up in the meantime. Alright, they do have another Mine and another Tower, and then a Karn, so still no Tron and a payoff we can counter with the Force. So we're doing okay. Next turn we get to play the Mystic Naga, which represents a real clock. Opponent doesn't have any cheap blockers to get in the way. Plays out the other tower. And Oblivion Stone. Oblivion Stone is a bit of an issue. At five mana they can kind of blow up the world. We know they have one more land in hand. And if our plan is just to get them with this Mystic Naga as soon as possible, then we might want to prevent them from blowing up the worlds as soon as they find 5 mana. Yeah, it's probably worth a uh, force here. And I'll exile the Ninja of the Deep Hours. And run out to Miss Naga. And I'm probably not gonna Ninjutsu the Ninja of the Deep Hours next turn, since I just want to apply as much pressure as possible with the Naga. And hope they brick on finding Tron. So it just plays out another mine. Karn and one unknown in hand. Infiltrator. Can't play that pre-combat, sadly. So I think the play is just attack for three and let uh, Naga make a token. It's a little awkward that we're holding two four mana ninjas that we don't really want to ninjutsu at the moment. But now we've got a bit of an army going and as soon as we find a fourth land we can play Infiltrator pre-combat and draw a million cards. Opponent says go. Polluted Delta, so we'll fetch up an island. So despite not finding any of our cheap ninjutsu enablers, Miss Syndic and Naga just being castable at 3 mana is a pretty big deal. Play Infiltrator, attack for 6, make 2 more Nagas, draw 2 cards if all goes well, and then we should be in okay spots, although of course the Tron deck, once they assemble Tron they'll have 
a ton of mana, so they could do all sorts of uh, powerful things. Ulamogs, another Oblivion Stone, Ugin, so we're not out of the woods yet. But at least Karn Liberated is not too threatening here, now that we have all these Miss Syndicate Naga tokens. Let's attack. And the best cards we can pick up here are additional copies of Force of Negation, maybe a Thought Seize to snipe one of the payoffs out of their hands before they assemble Tron, and yeah, opponent just has to scoop it up. So despite the Mulgan, we were able to disrupt the Tron deck just enough to get the Naga going. So how do we want a sideboard? Definitely want two copies of Ceremonious Rejection, Spell Pierce and two Force of Negations, so five counter spells coming in. What do we take out? Fatal Push doesn't do much, so that's an easy cut. And then one more card has to be taken out, probably just a Mistblade Shinobi. Can bounce a Worm Coil Engine, so it's not a dead card. But overall, they don't play a ton of creatures we want to be bouncing. I think Smoke Shroud is probably still better. Don't want to cut any of the enablers. This card is good. So yeah, we'll try this. All right, so we're on the draw, and we can't seem to draw any of our enablers here. So I think we've got a mulligan. Also don't have any interaction, so this is kind of just a bad hand with too many lands. And all right, this we can probably keep. And then probably putting a Naga on the bottom. Keep our two enablers in case they answer the first one. Definitely want a rejection. And then turn one. I could keep up Rejection to counter an early Expedition map, although they'll play that turn 1 if they have it. So I'm probably just gonna tap out for a Fairy Seer, set up our Scry, maybe find a 2-mana Ninjutsu creature. And then uh, starting from turn 2, turn 3, we can maybe keep up a Rejection. Let's see if they have the turn 1 map. Mine into Sphere, alright. Rejection doesn't counter Sylvan Scrying, so no reason to keep up Rejection here, I think. So I'll just play the Fairy off an island. And then next one we can play Outcast, keep up Rejection, unless we scry into something useful. Discard spells, counter spells are all welcome additions. So we've got Outcast Ornithopter, I think we can bottom both. We've got enough enablers. Alright, let's see what they have. Tower, Green Mana, Sylvan Scrying. Alright, so they'll have turn 3 Tron here. And we only have a Rejection to really protect ourselves. So hopefully we can pick up some additional counter spells in the meantime. But for now, we'll just uh, attack for one, play Outcast. And hope that their hand doesn't have a ton of curve toppers here. We have no way of really stopping Tron once they assemble it. Only have counter spells to get the payoff cards or hand disruption to take them away. It's going to be a turn three Ugin the Ineffable. Yeah, that's worth a rejection. And a Chromatic Sphere as well. Alright, so we dealt with the first threat here. And Ornithopter is not going to help us answer a second one. So let's just Ninjutsu the Naga. What do we pick up? Probably the Fairy Seer. So we get to re-trigger Scry 2. But we're in a world of trouble if our opponent uh, has any payoff cards left. I should have probably played Ornithopter here, no reason not to in case we want to enable Ninjutsu next turn without having to pick up the Outcast. I guess the reason not to play it out is if they have like an Oblivion Stone. All right, it's going to be a Worm Coil Engine instead, so now we're hoping to pick up our uh, lone Shinobi to bounce the Worm Coil. Also picking up Fairy Seer means we could maybe play Force without paying its mana, but now we have enough mana to play Fairy and keep up Force. So yeah, we won't be attacking with the Nagas, just attack for one with Outcast. And then if the engine attacks, we could just take it and then attack back with the Nagas, or we could double block. Probably just gonna take it so we can make more Nagas, and hopefully they don't have a second Worm Coil. So let's get in for one. And then I probably want to fetch before playing Fairy Seer, so we don't mess up or scry. And now that we get to keep up Force for an Oblivion Stone, I think I'm okay running out our uh, Ornithopter as well. So Infiltrator is a good draw. Do we want Outcast afterwards? Probably not. And then run out Ornithopter. Alright. So, let's see what they have. Some green mana. And Karn Liberated. Worthy of a Force of Negation. So Karn's exiled. Worm Coil stays back, so we can't attack with the Nagas. But Infiltrator is a great pickup here, so 
And I could just hard cast Infiltrator, I think I would rather ninjutsu it, so in case we pick up some hand disruption or counter spells, we can potentially still get access to those. Now do I send a Mr. Nagas to draw an extra card? Opponent does get to gain 6 life if we do, so that's probably not worth it. And I can just ninjutsu with the Ornithopter. Could also ninjutsu with the Fairy Seer. It's a close call, again picking up Fairy Seer enables force as well. I think I'll ninjutsu the Ornithopter instead. Try and get in a bit more damage. Outcasts and a land. Alright, so not ideal, but I guess we just run out our hand here. Hope they don't have like an Ugin or an Oblivion Stone. On the bright side, Ornithopter survives Ugin, but that's not really gonna help. Alright, Buried Ruin, that's fine. It's gonna cantrip this Chromatic Star. And I mean, as the board sits, we're pulling further and further ahead with all these Changeling Outcasts, drawing cards with Infiltrator. But it looks like they found another payoff here. It's gonna be World Breaker. I guess it could have been worse. Blows up one of our lands, but the Outcasts can still keep attacking here. It does have Reach, so Ornithopter no longer a great Ninjutsu Enabler. But now the Worm Coil, I guess, can start attacking as well. So I could just trade off the Nagas. I can take six. So what are the Nagas doing for us? It's not like we can easily get rid of the World Breaker. But now I guess I could attack with everyone and just draw extra cards with Infiltrator and then make additional copies with the Nagas. I think I'll still take it. I guess I can jump with Ornithopter. Maybe that's fine, just so we don't take six. And then we'll reevaluate next turn if we attack with everyone, everyone except Infiltrator. If we keep a chum blocker back. What do we grave to pick up? So if I attack with everyone, they probably block Infiltrator, but we get to draw four cards and make two copies of Miss Syndicate Naga, so that's probably worth it. If I attack with everyone except Infiltrator, they block Naga. We get to make a backup Naga, and I draw three cards, so that's still pretty good. So it's a fine line here between attacking with everyone or leaving the Infiltrator back. I guess I'll keep the Infiltrator back in case we don't find another one. So we can keep drawing more cards next turn. Poidon just takes it. Alright. Doesn't even bother blocking a Naga. Thoughtseize and Inquisition picked up, and wow, our opponent just concedes. So maybe they forgot to block, but either way, we were gonna be in okay shape since we could Thoughtseize away another payoff card. Of course, our opponent can always top deck another one, and we would be in trouble. But we were kind of doing it there. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty nice opening hand. If our opponent can disrupt our turn 1 Fairy Seer into turn 2 Infiltrator. Could also decide to Thoughtseize first, opponent on a turn on Fiery Islets and Goblin Guide, so this is probably just Burn, playing a bunch of extra Horizon lands. And Burn's not a great matchup, this end also not particularly great against Burn, since they have so many cheap Burn spells to take out our creatures and prevent us from getting value out of Ninjutsu. think I'm still gonna play the Fairy Seer here, since one way we can win is by snowballing card advantage with the Infiltrator. Bottom both, since we probably just want lands. And then we'll see whether or not uh, they ignore the Fairy Seer and we get to connect with the Infiltrator. Take two, also when facing Goblin Guide. And getting to Scry, we could like Scry so we can keep a land on top to get value out of the Goblin Guide. But no lands for next turn. Suspends a Rift Bolt and passes the turn. Ornithopter the draw, so if they're holding a Lightning Bolt, they could kill the Infiltrator as soon as we go to Ninjutsu, which would not be great. But what's the alternative here? Don't really have one, like Thoughtseize seems pretty medium. Could also Ninjutsu the Ninja of the Deep Hours instead of the Infiltrator, since that's, I guess, less bad than losing the Infiltrator, but they're both quite bad. Let's attack. And then fetch up probably an Island. I think I'm still gonna go with the Infiltrator here. Just hope they don't have the bolt. And they might keep the bolt anyway, just to go upstairs. Alright, to do with the bolt, that's too bad. And then we get to replay Ornithopter to enable Ninjutsu for next turn. And we get to try again. If we get to connect with the Miss Syndicate Naga, that would be nice. Rift Bolt just going upstairs, ignoring the Ornithopter. And another Horizon Land. So opponent's not gonna run out of action anytime soon. Attacks with a guide. Can we get a land? We cannot. Changeling outcast a draw. We'll take two. And a seal of fire, which can 
take out any of our creatures at instant speed as well. Grim Lampomancer is also a nightmare for us to deal with. Alright, so we're not winning this game, that's for sure. Kind of stalled on lands, facing a lot of cheap answers for our creatures. Can we make any relevant plays here? I guess we could like Ninjutsu the Shinobi to bounce the Lava Mancer for a turn, and then maybe it'll seal of fire that instead. It's uh, worth a try. They could just seal of fire it, or just play a Lightning Bolt from hand. Replay Fairy Seer, and maybe stack some lands on top. So bottom Naga, top Polluted Delta. Play an Ornithopter. And pass a turn. But now between the Seal of Fire and the Grim Lava Mancer, it's almost going to be impossible to connect with one of our ninjutsu creatures. Finally get to draw a card from the Goblin Guide at least. Probably still taking two. Don't think we're casting Thoughtseize this game. Another Horizon Land. Also food for the Grim Lava Mancer. And a Prismatic Vista to draw. So I guess this turn I can Ninjutsu the Ninja of the Deep Hours and then play Outcast. They'll probably kill the, the Ninja here. So we'll attack with Ornithopter. Probably need to keep the Fairy Seer on defense at this point. They could also just let this happen and keep their burn, but they'll decide to kill the Ninja with the Grim Lava Master, which makes sense. And it's probably not even worth it to run out a Changeling Outcast here. I've got plenty of Ninjutsu Enablers, and taking unnecessary damage doesn't seem worth it. I'll run out Polluted Delta, but yeah, this game is basically over. After sideboard, we improve a little bit with those Collective Brutalities. Not enough to swing the matchup in our favor. This is probably one of our worst matchups, but at least we'll have a fighting chance if we draw Collective Brutality. Get to take out a creature, strip away a burn spell, gain a bit of life. Goblin Guide reveals an island. Do we need to chum block? I think we need to keep both enablers for now. And an Eidolon of the Great Revel. Ninjutsu doesn't trigger the Eidolon on the bright side, but that probably means that we're locked out of the game, because if we find a fatal push for the Lava Mancer, we take two from Eidolon, two from Seal, two more from Lava Mancer, and there's no recovering from that. Alright, I think we can uh, pack it in here. So onto sideboarding against Burn. So Brutality is definitely coming in. Spell Pierce seems okay. And then Force of Negations and maybe. Two for one ourselves isn't great, but if we can enact our game plan and kind of get ahead on cards, then Force at least can uh, counter a Burn spell or a removal spell on one of our creatures. And then what do we take out? Don't love Thoughtseize. So that's an easy cut. Miss Blade Shinobi is not amazing. Bouncing like an Eidolon can be okay, they might not even play Eidolon on the draw. Uh, bouncing Lava Mancer is okay, but most of their other one drops, Swiss Spear and Goblin Guide, have haste, so bouncing those doesn't seem amazing. So I think I'll just shave uh, Smoke Shroud, it's not like they have a ton of blockers to jump in the way. Plague Engineer doesn't do a whole lot. So yeah, I think we'll try this, and we'll be on the play. What about this hand? Seems fine. We've got our enablers and our ninjutsu creatures, sadly no Inquisitions to maybe take away a Lightning Bolt, but we do get to double up on Enablers here at least. And then Outcast plus Infiltrator on turn 2, if we can make that happen would be nice, since then we get to draw 2 cards right away, thanks to the Outcast being a ninja. So the Ornithopter letting us keep the Outcast in place quite useful. Alright, opponent with a turn 1 Grim Lava Monster, 2 damage doesn't kill the Infiltrator at least. And Fatal Push can answer the Lava Monster, so alright, it's go time. Fetch up an island, attack with both, pick up Ornithopter, draw two cards. So we've got a nice start here. And then Force of Negation at the ready to counter any instance the opponent might play in their turn. Something like a Searing Blaze they probably have to play now since they didn't have a fetch land. So we can force that. It's going to be a Swiss Spear instead. So let's see if they're interested in playing defense. Alright, Lightning Bolt the Infiltrator, so that's a great target for Force. And so what do we get rid of? Probably the Ninja, since I prefer the board presence that the Naga provides. Gets in for three. Alright, so we get to establish our game plan here at least. I just realized I did not replay Ornithopter second main. I keep forgetting to replay Ornithopter 
I see my mana stepped out, but of course Ornithopter is zero mana, so we can always replay that. And yeah, that does cost us quite a bit here, since now we can't ninjutsu the Missinigan Naga and um, still draw cards with the Outcast. That being said, the play might be to Fatal Push the Grim Lava Mancer or the Swiss Spear anyway, since we're already pretty far ahead on cards, and we can probably wait a turn to ninjutsu the Naga. Probably still gonna just bite a bullet here and ninjutsu the Naga, cut our losses. But yeah, should have uh, definitely played Ornithopter last turn. So let's attack. And then Ninjutsu. Get to draw two cards, make an extra Naga here, which can then block the Swiss Spear. And we'll make sure to play out Ornithopter this time. And there's a fetch land into a seal of fire. Swift spear attacks. I think I'll just jump with Ornithopter here, to be honest. Keep the Naga. Since if they play another instance, the Swift spear would survive the three damage from Naga anyway. And I don't want to end up in a situation where they just kill off all our creatures and we're kind of stranded here. Suspends Rift Bolt and passes. All right. So they've got a Grim Lava Master activation at the ready. Collect a Brutality and Amazing Draw. So how do we want to get started? Probably start with Inquisition. See what's up. Might prompt a response. Take Eidolon, leave them with a Fiery Islet. And then I guess I'll Fatal Push the Lava Mancer. They'll probably activate it. They could take out both Nagas or take out the Infiltrator with the two damage from Seal and the two damage from Lava Mancer. Goes for the Naga. Earlier, I could have also fetched for a swamp instead of an island with the Prismatic Vista. That might have been better, since we probably have more black interactive spells than blue ones. So, Seal of Fire on the Naga. Deal two, draw a card. And pick up another Naga. Alright. Say go. Rift Bolts can take out our Infiltrator. But now we can rebuild with our Missing Naga. Brutality can take out Swiss Spear. And maybe gain a bit of life. Alright, just another Seal of Fire. Seal of Fire actually pretty good against our Ninjutsu strategy, since we can't take it away with a discard spell before uh, committing to an attack. But our opponent is empty-handed, Ornithopter to draw. So I can Brutality, killing Swift Spear, getting to life. If they draw into a one-mana burn spell, I guess that's unfortunate. But so it goes, discarding Watery Grave. They'll crack the Islet in response to Dick for one mana burn spell. If they find one, they save Swiss Spear. They did not. Of course, the downside of that play is that we could potentially have another discard spell and take away whatever they draw into. We'll unload these enablers and then... Yeah, that uh, misplay of not replaying the Ornithopter earlier did cost us quite dearly, since we missed out on multiple draw triggers from the Infiltrator. Opponent suspends another Rift Bolt. One card in hand. And Infiltrator the draw. Alright, at least that dodges the Seal of Fire. So I can attack. Ninjutsu the Ornithopter. They might Seal of Fire the Outcast to prevent drawing two cards. And if we draw land, we can also add the Naga to the board. So hopefully no Lightning Bolts. And they do Seal of Fire the Outcasts. Fair enough. So now the Naga might survive. And draw into a land. Alright, perfect. So let's just empty our hands, make sure to play Ornithopter in case we find more ninjutsu creatures. And then they'll have to decide what to take out with this Rift Bolt, whether it's the Naga or the Infiltrator. Takes out Infiltrator. Right, hopefully Naga gets to stick around. Some Baked Canyon, opponent gets a redraw. And yeah, these Horizon Lands are a great addition for the burn deck, making sure they never flood out. Lava Spine going face. But her opponent's at 5, so this Naga's gonna close out the game pretty quickly. And Ninja the draw as well. Perfect. Alright, so we had a nice start here. Even our misplay couldn't lose us this game. And then the Collective Brutality also. A nice card to have. Alright, so any changes for game 3. Now the misplayed Shinobi could get a little bit better, as it can maybe bounce an Eidolon. That could be an issue otherwise if they play turn 2. That's about the only change I'm thinking of. Smoke Shrouds could get Infiltrator out of uh, Bolt range, so it does have some upside there. But I don't think I want a second one, so I'm probably just going to stay put 
And how about this hand? Seems okay. We've got Inquisition for some disruption, multiple enablers, and a Ninja of the Deep Hours as a nice ninjutsu creature. Turn on Goblin Guide, not what we wanted to see, as they get to beat down right away. And we don't have a Fatal Push or Brutality at the ready. Alright, so decision time. I can run out Fairy Seer to maybe set up Ninjutsu. It's unlikely to work out, given how many instant speed burn spells our opponent has to take out our creatures. So I might be better off just going for the turn on Inquisition, next turn double up on Fairy Seers, and take it from there. Maybe take out an Eidolon with this Inquisition, which would otherwise be pretty problematic with our hand. And their hand is Goblin Guides, Lightning Bolt, Skewer, and two Horizon Lands. Alright, probably just gotta go with the auto goblin guide here, otherwise we're gonna take too much damage. Their mana base is quite painful, and we are a creature deck, so their life total does matter against us. So having triple horizon land could come back to cost them a little bit. So right now their hand is a land, a lightning bolt, and a skewer the critics. We'll see whether or not they prioritize burning our face, or keeping some burn spells for our creatures. And opponents with a light up the stage. Well, that's a good top deck here. What do they find? Seal of Fire, Rift Bolt. I guess uh, Seal of Fire, pretty nice alongside light up the stage, as both a way of enabling it later in the game and being able to play it even if there's no great target in play. So it runs out Seal of Fire, which can take out one of our creatures. And now I got to draw. So let's just fetch up an island, run out double Fairy Seer. But yeah, this game's not looking great, opponent with a fantastic draw. And we don't have enough tools to really interact, no fatal pushes, no brutalities. Let's see if we can put one on top. Spell Pierce doesn't seem great here. So I could keep the Watery Grave on top, I think I'm still bottoming it, and then maybe with the second Fairy Seer I'll keep a land on top to get a bit of value. Still need to dig for those cards I just mentioned. And Changeling Outcast, not exactly what we need. So we'll bottom both, and ideally Goblin Guy draws us into a land, and then we draw a Collective Brutality or a Fatal Push. So they can suspend the Rift Bolt from the Light of the Stage from last turn, Skewer, Lightning Bolt, and Seal of Fire, so we're pretty close to dead. But I don't think we can really double block here, since they could just take out one of our blockers as well. Seal of Fire, the Fairy. They might Skewer the other Fairy leaving them with a Lightning Bolt and a Rift Bolt. And I think our opponent forgot to suspend the Rift Bolt, if I'm not mistaken. So at least we've got that going for us. Run out Miss Syndicate Naga, pass a turn. And that might eat the Lightning Bolt here. All right, so we don't know the contents of their hand. Goblin Guide is gonna attack us down to 10 at least. Reveals a land. And Lava Spike down to 7. At least they've had to use a lot of burn spells on our creatures, so our life total is not as low as it would normally be against burn. So the play is just Naga. Plus a tap land. Might even have to block the guide here, given a chance. And they had another Lightning Bolt for Naga. Alright, put them down to 13 from all those Horizon lands. We're gonna go down to 5. Goblin Guide revealing Fairy Seer, not exactly what we want. And they have another Horizon Land, so they can sack two of them end of turn. Probably just gonna run out a 4 mana Infiltrator here, as it can technically block Goblin Guide. Hope our opponent bricks. Alright, sacrifices both lands. So they've got three cards to work with here. Pretty likely to find another answer for the Infiltrator. Goblin Guide attacks, definitely forced to block here. Reveals a Ninja of the Deep Hours, not what we need. So they might have like another Seal of Fire to maybe finish off the Infiltrator. There it is. Well, at least we're buying ourselves a bit of time. They're just gonna go upstairs instead. So we're at 3, dead to a Bolt. And a Skewer to finish us off. Alright, so the attack with the Goblin Guides, maybe to check for Force of Negation, who knows. Alright, so loss to Burn, pretty rough matchup, did not find. Fatal push or brutality in time, but at least we managed to win a game, which is promising. So on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and how about this hand? Yeah, it's not amazing, but probably good enough. We've got our enabler, some interaction, and an ninjutsu creature. The interaction may or may not be good enough in this matchup, 
We definitely wouldn't mind playing against a creature deck since both Fatal Push and Smoke Shroud are nice tools to have against a creature deck. If we're up against some sort of uh, combo deck, then Fatal Push and Smoke Shroud not exactly what we're looking for in our opening hand. And then uh, turn one can run out Ornithopter and probably just uh, Polluted Delta. I guess we could keep this to maybe enable Fatal Push Revolt and just play this tapped for now. And hopefully we'll draw into an Infiltrator or a Ninja of the Deep Hours. Sigar does 8 of a Glimmer Void. They're probably going to follow that up with some artifacts as we see Spider Silk Net. Usually you don't see Sigar does 8 in Chiro, so it might actually be a deck planning to play a bunch of equipment and actually use those equipment. We'll just uh, play a fetch land and say go. Don't think it's worth it to run out Smoke Shroud on Ornithopter quite yet. Although I guess there is a bit of upside since if we play the Smoke Shroud on Ornithopter, then next turn if we Ninjutsu, the Smoke Shroud falls off, gets equipped onto the Naga, we get in one more damage. But we might want to keep a Fatal Push to kill a creature here, as we see Leonin, Shikari, 2 2. They can activate equip abilities anytime they could cast an instance. Fair enough. Do I want to Fatal Push that? Probably. And then just fetch up another Watery Grave. And then attack. And Ninjutsu. Alright, so we get our clock going here. Make sure to replay Ornithopter so we can Ninjutsu the Shinobi next turn if we want to. Interesting to point out that uh, Spider Silk Net does grant reach, so they could potentially block Ornithopter or a Smoke Shrouded creature that way. And Goblin Gavalier, plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it, with Trample, fair enough. And with Sigarda's Aids, they can attach equipment to creatures right away if they want to. They're keeping up 2 mana instead of equipping the Spider Silk Net, so something smells fishy. So what's our plan here? Do I just Smoke Shroud one of the Nagas? So with Sigarda's Aid, our opponent can play auras and equipments at instant speed, and then equip those to the Gavalier as well at instant speed. So that's probably what they're setting up here. So let's uh, Smoke Shroud one of our Nagas. Don't think it matters which one. And I'm probably still attacking with Ornithopter. They could have another Reach equipment, but then they're not blocking the Nagas. Let's get in there. Not sure what equipment to expect, whether or not it's correct to attack with the other Naga here, but I'll try. Alright, Colossus Hammer, fair enough. It's hammer time. So they get to ambush or 3 1 miss in a good Naga, but we get to Shinobi the Gavalier, which is the good news here. So damage happens, get to bounce the Gavalier and make another miss in a good Naga. And uh, now the Colossus Hammer is no longer equipped. So unless they have another way of equipping the Colossus Hammer for free, it's going to be stuck in play for now. Replays Gavalier and just has to pass a turn. Don't think I fetch with Polluted Delta, life total could matter. Thoughtseize, I guess that's worth running out. See if they have another Colossus Hammer. Opponent runs out Cathar's Shield in response to equip the Gavalier. And the Cranial Plating as well. Alright, well, could be an issue. So how big is this Gavalier now? 10-4. Thoughtseize misses, doesn't see anything. If we attack with everyone, then uh, they might block this Naga, but we get in for 4, get a backup, and then Shinobi bounces Gavalier. So yeah, I probably just send everyone, keep Ornithopter on defense. The Gavalier does have Trample, but no reason to attack with Ornithopter right now. Opponent decides to block Shinobi, so we get in for 7 damage, make 2 more Nagas. And then uh, hopefully we don't die to this Gavalier next turn. We only have 4 Toughness on defense, but right now the only equipment they can equip is the Net. Which will be able to next turn block the Naga, but now we got our opponent down to 5, so that might not be enough. Well, Pure Steel Paladin was a good draw, since now they get to equip the Colossus Hammer for free. And that's... Probably going to kill us here, 22 damage with Trample. We only have 4 Toughness. They can add a Spider Silk Net as well. Alright, well, so in hindsight, maybe the Fatal Push 
wasn't necessary on the Shikari and we could have saved it for Pure Seal Paladin or the Gavalier instead. But now we know for the next game, so we're pretty dead here. How do we want a sideboard? So Ceremonious Rejection could counter some of the equipment, so that could be okay. Uh, Plague Engineer probably doesn't do enough. Collective Brutality just as another cheap removal spell to maybe kill a creature before it gets equipped could be fine. Force of Negation can be okay, don't know if we need four of them. Same with uh, Spell Pierce, that's also a maybe. What don't we need? Um, Smoke Shroud was okay that game, but they do have a lot of reach equipment as well. So it does have an expiration date, everything else seems fine, so I think I'll cut the Smoke Shroud. In terms of enablers, I don't know if we need all four Ornithopters and Fairy Seers, since they're not really killing any of our creatures. So Ornithopter is kind of the more explosive option, Fairy Seer adds a bit of consistency with the Scry 2. I think I'll shave to Ornithopters and uh, try this. So not bringing in Spell Pierce, not bringing in the third and fourth copies of Force. Yeah, we'll try this beyond the play. And yeah, the sand seems fine. I've got to turn one Inquisition plus Ornithopter, turn two Ninja of the Deep Hours, draw some cards or Shinobi for interaction. And Hand Disruption's got to be pretty good against the opponent's deck if we can take a Sigardas Aid or take away a Pure Seal Paladin, they're left with a bunch of equipment that maybe don't do much. And the opponent's hand has Ensnaring Bridge. Alright, that's interesting that they brought that in. Goblin Engineer, Leonin Shikari, Spider Silk Nut, and Valduk. So Ensnaring Bridge could be annoying, but we do have Ornithopter that can attack past it regardless. And then we can still Ninjutsu afterwards and get in a bit of damage. So I don't know if it's kind of the end-all be-all. If we take the Spider Silk Net and the Glimmer Void might not be turned on for a while. So we can kind of strand them on a single Cavern of Souls. I guess it makes sense. Just take the net. Kind of feels weird, but the Reach is also relevant against Ornithopter. And I don't really care about the other creatures here. Let's take the net. Play Ornithopter, say go. And now if they find a Pure Steel Paladin that's weaker. Valduk doesn't have any equipment to go with it. And uh, the Glimmer Void, most importantly, might not be turned on for a while. So runs out Cavern. What does it name? Human Soldier. Name's Human. And they did pick up a Mox Opal. That's pretty good for them. Although they're pretty far from three artifacts required to uh, make mana with the Mox Opal. But it does mean that uh, Glimmer Void won't get sacrificed anytime soon. Right, let's just fetch up a basic island and draw some cards. So Ninja gets in for two, draw a card, and a Fairy Seer to pick up. So can run that out next turn, make sure to replay Ornithopter for now. So we can maybe a Ninja to something next turn, like the Shinobi. Runs out Goblin Engineer. Let's see what that puts in the graveyard. Sword of Fire and Ice. Could be pretty effective against us, but we won't give them the chance to get that back with Engineer since we can just bounce it with the Shinobi. So after seeing Ensnaring Bridge, maybe we want to reconsider Ornithopter and have access to four copies anyway. So for now, we'll play the Fairy Seer pre-combat, in case we can set up our draw with the Ninja of the Deep Hours. And bottom a bunch of lands. And attack. Let's see if they want a chum block. Seems unlikely. So we get to draw a card and bounce the engineer. Pick up another land. Alright, so we're flooding out a little bit. This would be a great time to find an infiltrator. Opponent turns out a spider silk net. So they still don't have the three artifacts required to make mana with Mox Opal, but they're pretty close to being able to play the bridge, which could shut us down. Although opponent has a pretty clunky draw, so they might have a few cards in hand by the time they play the bridge. Replays Goblin Engineer. Can put more stuff in the graveyard. Goes for Lightning Greaves. Fair enough. Let's untap. Pick up another Fairy Seer. Run it out pre-combat as well. And collect the Brutality and Miss Syndicate Naga. Those are both pretty decent pickups. So I guess I want to draw the Brutality right now. And then the Naga next turn. So top and top. And then I could also send the Shinobi just to kind of entice the opponent in blocking the Shinobi so we can for sure draw the card with Ninja of the Deep Hours. But they might also just want to take it and not chump with the Engineer since they did 
show us last turn that they're unwilling to chump with Engineer. So I think I'll just attack like this for now and leave Shinobi back. And if they want to chump with Engineer, that's fine by me. Then we'll draw Collective Brutality next turn. Opponent takes it. And then I'll run out the Brutality Killing Engineer since don't necessarily want them to get back these different artifacts from the graveyard. Do I discard the land here to drain them for two? It's probably worth it. Don't think they'll have many instants and sorceries we need to get rid of. Although then again, we also probably don't need the other land. So maybe I'll fully escalate this brutality. Let's see what they have in hand. That we don't know about yet. Looks like Colossus Hammer. Alright, so that could be scary. So our opponent's down to ten. And next turn we know we're drawing a Naga. Pretty far from having an active ensnaring bridge. So Swift Blade Vindicator instead. Double Strike means that it's pretty scary if they can equip the Colossus Hammer onto it. But they're pretty far from uh, doing so. I think I'm okay attacking with everyone here. And if they want to block the Shinobi for free, they can. Then they take two more damage and we get to draw a card. They do block Shinobi. So they're probably hoping to top deck a Cigar does 8 and kind of wombo combo us. So we get to draw a card and make another Naga. Fatal Push would probably seal the deal. Pull the Delta instead. Replay Ornithopter, say go. Alright, so our opponent's got five cards in hand. It's pretty far from having a bridge that does anything. And a quarter shield to draw, so we should be okay. There's a snaring bridge, but they still have three cards in hand. So they seem pretty dead on board to me. And a force of negation just in case. Alright. Let's attack with everyone. So for game three, do we want to reconsider Ornithopter since it does match up well against the Snaring Bridge? Maybe. Pretty happy with the Collective Brutality there. Four seems fine. Not sure if we want more than two. They had a lot of creatures that game as well. So I guess I'll bring in two more Ornithopters over Fairy Seer. The Scry from Fairy is quite valuable, but again, they have so many reach equipment that can randomly stop our flyers. That outcast is probably better. Want all the hand disruption, all the fatal pushes, brutality, couple forces, and then all the payoff cards here. Shinobi being quite useful as well. And then I think rejection is still worth it. Can counter a bridge, can counter a Colossus Hammer. All right, we're on the draw. We're missing an enabler for Ninjutsu. Otherwise, our hand's quite good. Both fatal push and force relevant interaction. So I think I'm willing to keep the fact that we can play Nag on turn three and uh, still get there is kind of the reason why I keep. If we had two ninjas of the deep power, or a ninja and an infiltrator, then the sand would be a bit more awkward. Brutality could be useful too. Let's just play a delta so we can fetch a watery grave tap end of turn if we don't need to push. And if we do need to push, a swamp is fine. Or I can save the push and just brutality on turn two. It's gonna be a mox opal, don't need to force that. Cathar shield is fine. Quarter shield is fine. So now mox opal makes mana. And it's going to be SRAM. Alright, want to fatal push that the first chance we get. Opponent goes to combat. So I think I'm getting a swamp and pushing. Again, we don't have a turn 2 play lined up for now, so it could be okay to Brutality. If we pick up a Fairy Seer or an Outcast, then we might want to fatal push right now. So I think I'll still go for it. Alright, SRAM down. Also, the fact that they were willing to play these equipment before playing Stram indicates that they might have a mana light hand with uh, very few lands. Alright, there's a Fairy Seer, so we got rewarded for Fatal Pushing when we did. Could fetch an Island so we don't mess up the Scry, could play Shores in case we draw more Shores later. I guess I'll just play the Shores for now. It's unlikely that we keep both cards on top anyway. Alright, bottom both. Of course, upside of fetching first is that if we bottom cards, then we don't shuffle them back into the deck after uh, sacrificing a fetch land. So there are reasons to do both. Opponent just passes. And which ninja do we want to run out? Given that we drew Inquisition, probably just go for the ninja of the deep hours here. So we'll lead with Inquisition to see what's up. And we see a hand off. Double Dispatch. Deafening Clarion Cranial Plating. Opponent turned into a control deck here. So Dispatch is turned on with Metalcraft. So it does just exile a creature straight up. So that's pretty effective. Although we could collect a Brutality to take one away as well. Deafening Clarion, pretty effective against Miss Syndicate Naga for going off. Although that one's easier to Force of Negation. So I think the plan is take a Dispatch and then Brutality the other Dispatch as well. And then 
We can have force for Clarion, and then we can Ninjutsu next turn instead of going for it now. So play a land, attack, if they want to dispatch, that's fine. And then second main phase, I'll probably Brutality. So your opponent should wait to see if we Ninjutsu anything. Not gonna Ninjutsu anything, just hit them for one. And then Brutality, just one mode, they can instant or Sorcery. And we might see Dispatch and Response, in which case we take Clarion. Otherwise we'll take the Dispatch. And hope our opponent doesn't top deck another SRAM or Pure Steel Paladin, since that could be an issue. So I'll take Dispatch. And pass a turn. Alright, so our discard spells kind of sculpting our game plan here nicely. Opponent turns out Cranial Plating. They don't have the third land yet to play Clarion in the first place. I think I just want to get them dead as soon as possible, which probably means playing the Naga here. And then I could replay the Fairies here and then pitch Ninja to the Force of Negation. Since I don't really want a Ninjutsu with one of the Miss Syndicate Nagas anyway. Yeah, it's probably fine. A dig towards more disruption. Another Ninja of the Deep Hours, I guess, is fine. So definitely bottling with the Outcast. So if I keep the Ninja, I can pitch a Ninja and still have a Ninja for the Fairy Seer next turn. That's probably okay. And if they don't Clarion, then we'll see what we want to do. All right, they do have the Glimmer Void, so I expect a Clarion here, which we can force. And hope they don't have another Deafening Clarion or Ensnaring Bridge lined up. Opponent takes eight. Always yes to this trigger. All right, just a Prismatic Vista, so... I might want to hold this Fairy Seer. I think I'm still playing the Fairy Seer. If they have another Clarion, they have another Clarion. Just want to dig towards more interaction in case they don't have one right away. And then, do we keep Fatal Push? Fatal Push is good if they try to go off with like a Pure Seal Paladin. Fatal Push doesn't do much if they have an Ensnaring Bridge or another Clarion here. I guess I'll keep it. And then I'll keep the Vista in hand. Alright, let's see if we got there. And our opponent concedes, awesome! So we got cheesed out in the first game, but we got her in the sideboard at games. Alright, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.